Today I am going to be taking a look at my art from second grade. Wow, that is, that is something. But first, a word from the sponsor of this video. Take it away, Saw Casey. This video is brought to you by NordVPN. Don't want strangers busting into your computer and getting a hold of your old and embarrassing art? Well, NordVPN has your back. Go to nordvpn.com slash CaseyGolden to get 75% off a three year plan and use code CaseyGolden for an extra free month. For free, what? I'll be honest, I've yet to be hacked myself, knock on wood, but that's because I play it safe and NordVPN definitely helps with that. NordVPN offers a 30 day money back guarantee on their super fast service with 24 seven customer service, unlimited bandwidth, and an automatic kill switch. Wow. So thanks to NordVPN, my super embarrassing art is protected. But until then, let's expose my second grade self with this embarrassing art. Well, I mean, it's not embarrassing, it's silly. And then we're going to redraw, I think, three pieces. It's gonna be fun. Let's do it. So before we get into the art itself, let's just take a look at this portfolio. I mean, we have my name, KCG obviously because I am KCG. But we also have, what is this, a peace sign? We have a yin yang. And we have Pikachu saying Pikachu and a Pokeball going after it. And it says Pokeball, go. This, this screams the 90s. We have peace signs, yin yangs, and, and Pokemon. Doesn't get any more 90s than this. All right, the first piece. Oh boy. Our first piece we have is this carnival sort of situation. We have a horse, we have a Ferris wheel, we have pencil crayons. That's a Canadian term. I call them colored pencils. Or are they crayons? I have no idea. It's laminated. Um, it's beautiful. We have a pink horse with yellow details. We have a bunny. Don't know what that is. Is that a lizard? Hot dogs for $1.50, we have cotton candy stand. Honestly, this screams an ant illustration to me. I don't know if I have time for that for this video, but honestly, I could see this being an ant illustration because this is just kind of boring as far as art goes. But there you go. Next up, and wow, do I have a story for this piece. Oh, it's upside down. Sorry, second grade self. Okay, so in the back we have some literature, so let me just read that. Star and Stripes, how American. My goal for this project was to make the focal point. I mean, that's the first sentence of this three sentence statement. My focal point is the star in the middle. I mean, obviously, thank you. The ribbons are coming from the star and the big star is glittery. Second graders, huh? Okay, honestly, I do have a little story behind this art piece. Um, so my art teacher approached me, I think she actually approached me for the horse piece and she was like, hey, we want you to be in this like art gallery thing for children. And I was like, I want this piece to be shown because it's glittery and shiny. And I'm a second grader and I like shiny things. And she was like, are you sure you want this piece? You should probably do this other piece. And I was like, no, this one's shiny, I want it. So this piece was in the gallery and it's so weird that like now I can see how disappointed she was. And even then I kind of knew how disappointed she was, but I wanted this shiny glittery piece to be in the gallery. And I saw how simple and stupid it was amongst all the other talented art. And I was like, big yikes as a second grader. <laughs> So yeah, that's this piece. Uh, yeah. All right, next up we have this running man situation where it looks like I copied or did like a crayon. Oh my God, there's sparkles from the star thing all over my desk, I'm going to die. Anyways, here's the little man we traced over. It's like when you get a leaf on a piece of paper and then you get a crayon and you trace over it using the texture. I'm not sure the reason behind this project. All right, here's my name. 
I was self-absorbed then and I'm self-absorbed now. Don't know why there's a sock on the K when everything else is floral themed. I have no idea. Next up, we have this um, very tie-dye looking paw print sort of situation. In the back, we have some words. So let's just read that really quick, shall we? The title of my artwork is Paws on Tie-Dye. The media I used were acrylic paint and oil pastels. My goal for this project is to make it look good no matter what it is. Oh my God, if that isn't a mood. <laughs> One discovery I made was I can make a picture look good. Wow, my confidence as a second grader. I wish I had that now. So yeah, that's, that's pause on tie-dye. Wow. Next up, we have nothing written about this piece, but it looks like a landscape of a church in a field. I'm from Tennessee, so I'm definitely used to like churches and fields. So this looks like a pencil portrait. We have a tree in the background, a fence. We have a church, a field, maybe like a playground. And oh my God, the sparkles from the stars are everywhere. Our next piece is a Goosebumps fan art sort of parody. It says the scarecrow walks at midnight and we have like a cornfield and a tree. We have the scarecrow like peekaboo, but also the scarecrow is busting out of this window via the ladder. I don't know what's happening, but that's pretty funny. I mean, if this art doesn't age me, I don't know what does. So next up we have a comic page and it says here, art is pictures, clothes, presents, and getting them makes me happy even though we have a picture of a frowning um, octopus. Not really sure what's happening here, but on the back of this picture we have a it's me, I guess, wearing an Old Navy shirt. And if that doesn't tell you anything about where I shopped as a child. So next up we have this blue horse on a very abstract um, background. I wonder if this was a study of a previous artist because there's no way in heck I made this up as a child. So there you go. I love the little white square at the bottom that's like, um, by the way, this was done by Casey. <laughs> so there's that. Next up, we have a color wheel. Not, not much to say about that. It's a color wheel. I actually think this was the artwork at our desk. I don't know about you guys, but at our desks, we created name tags and then we decorated them how we wanted to. So again, we have Ash Ketchum's hat, yin yang, peace sign, rainbow, pokeball, smiley face, and Pikachu. If you didn't know, that is Pikachu, a very 90s label. So well, there you go. Next up, we have this robotic mouse. What is happening here? We have like a light shining down on this mouse. It looks very robotic. I mean, this is pretty interesting as far as art pieces go for a child. I wonder if I made this up. I don't know if I was inspired by something. Very curious about this ray of light coming. Oh wait, this is actually a rabbit. I thought it was a mouse because the ears were so small, but this is definitely a rabbit. So we have a robotic rabbit in what seems to be a snowy landscape with just a little bit of grass and sun shining on it. So there's that whatever that is okay and last but not least we have a self-portrait oh it says pokemon on the shirt i don't have a pokemon shirt at this point but it's really funny is this done on like a paper bag i'm really not sure what what this paper is is it pastel maybe i don't have pastel but i can definitely recreate this with watercolor but this is terrifying but I definitely think we could, I think this is a paper bag because look, we have this like, this, this bent shape thing over here. That's really interesting. Anyways, terrifying, but interesting. So 
There's our self-portrait when I was nine years old. So out of the images I think it would be fun to recreate today, I think it would be really fun to do this carnival scene specifically because I think it would be really well done as an ant illustration. And I think that really reflects, I don't know, what, what I am today as compared to 20 years ago. Oh gosh. Next up, I do think this uh, robot rabbit is really fun. I think this would be really interesting to see what I do with today. So I think this would be another fun illustration to recreate. And of course, the self-portrait. How do I draw myself today, 20 years later? Hopefully not like this. This is terrifying. I will be giving myself a Pokemon shirt, so we will see what I do with that. But yeah, I think these three pieces will be really fun to recreate 20 years later. So let's do it. Let's get to drawing. Here we go. The Carousel. So like I mentioned, when I saw this illustration, I just saw how open it was and how plain and boring. Wow, that sounds really rude. I just thought it's a carousel. Like there it is. It's not doing anything. There's not anything about it that's very exciting. And I'll be honest, maybe I did use this as an excuse to make an ant illustration because I did have a carnival or like a county fair as one of my to-do ant illustrations. So when I saw this carousel, I thought ant illustration. So if you are new to my channel and you don't know what a ant illustration is, it's where I draw, I don't know, 50 or more or so ants in an illustration. It's kind of like a Where's Waldo, but with bugs. I just cram as many ants as I can into an illustration and they're really cute and silly and hectic and busy and just cute and adorable and simple yet complicated. Basically, it's just something I really enjoy drawing and one day it's going to be a book. One day, one day. Okay, so now that I have talked about what an ant illustration is and all of my regular viewers are bored out of their mind, let's talk about this particular ant illustration. So obviously I had to take a lot of inspiration from my childhood drawing of a carousel and I don't know if this is, hold on, let me Google. I've done a lot of Googling, but let me see if this is something we copied in class basically. Okay, so I don't see anything directly really close to what I drew as a child. So I don't know if maybe my art teacher supplied us with a reference. Basically when it comes to all of the art as a nine year old, I just assume that they did not come out of my head and we copied things because I don't know about you guys, but I wasn't confident in coming up with my own illustrations and poses and all of this stuff until I was a lot older. And I'm talking like, I don't know, probably in my very late teens, maybe mid, like mid to late teens. And speaking of, can I just say really quick, looking at these drawings that I did as a nine year old, I'm really impressed with a lot of you guys that send me your art and you're like, hey, I'm 10. And I'm like, what, you're 10 and you drew that? So looking at my nine year old drawings, it's almost embarrassing because you guys are so good these days. Like you guys have so many inspirations and so many tools and tutorials available to you. I'm jealous. Okay, but getting back to the drawing. So obviously the main focus of this illustration was going to be the carousel, but being an ant illustration, I had to do a whole scene of a carnival slash county fair. And I will say I'm a little regretful that I didn't copy the colors of my carousel. I have blue and red for the top of the carousel, but I did think yellow and purple would be a little brighter and pop off of the page a little bit more, especially because I was going to be making a dirt brown ground. I wanted to make sure that everything else was a lot more colorful. So the concession stands in games, I made sure to be white with a little bit of red to make sure it was as bright as possible, but I didn't want the carousel to be the exact same thing because I did want a variety of colors and I wanted this to be bright and fun to represent the vibe of a county fair. So I made sure to use a lot of colors, even though, like I said, the ground was this dirt brown, which really brought things down a little bit. 
I probably should have put more balloons throughout this illustration to be able to put a lot of color in here. Something I kind of regret not doing in this illustration was giving an ant or two like this really big plushie to walk around with because it was a prize that they wanted a game, which would be the perfect tie in because you guys, today is the last day you can buy an ant plushie. Follow the link in the description if you want to get an ant plushie. Today is the last day. You cannot get another ant plushie after today. It is a limited release. So get yourself an ant plushie while you can. They're adorable and you will regret it. Anyways, while I was coloring this, I regretted not giving one of the ants a giant plushie to carry around. But I mean, that's like, the smallest detail. Overall, I'm really happy with how this illustration turned out. It really captured, I think, a fair vibe. We have the carousel in the background. We have our food and game stands, including a six-legged hot dog, I don't know, sign to represent bug life, but also it's a hot dog. Oh, I didn't mention, instead of a petting zoo, which you usually find at a fair, we have like, a slime area because in this bug world I wasn't really sure what an animal would be and it felt wrong making any other sort of bug or just like weird creature an animal. I know slugs and snails aren't bugs but they're like in the creepy crawly category so I thought it would be really fun to instead of having a petting zoo we had like a slime area. So we have ants touching their eyes and like playing in the slime, but also having conversations with them. And of course our carousel, instead of having horses, we have a variety of bugs, which is kind of weird, but also freaking adorable. And I don't know why, but my most favorite part of this illustration, I don't know why, it's the porta potties in the top left corner. We have our porta potties because when you go to a county fair, they aren't going to have toilets. Overall, I am super happy with this ant illustration. And I think as a child, I would absolutely love something like this. So it's almost like going back in time and just creating something for my child self. And honestly, I'm, I'm a child at heart. So there you go, there is our ant illustration. The rabbit. So for this rabbit illustration, I feel like there was a lot to consider. Looking at this illustration from my childhood, it's just what, a very simple illustration of a rabbit that is a robot. But at the same time, as I looked at this illustration, I felt like there was a lot more there than there was on the surface. So sure, we have this robotic rabbit and as a child, <laughs> as someone who doesn't know how to draw a robot, there's a lot of exposed gears and mechanics and other things. I mean, the eyeballs are made out of screws, but they're like popping out of his head. So it kind of looks like he's dying or something. Like, I don't know what's going on with this illustration. I can only assume that it's simply a robotic rabbit. But as someone who needs to over analyze things, I can't help but think, why are this rabbit's gears exposed? Why are the screw eyes popping out of its head? There must be more to the story, right? These days, I love making more of a story out of my illustrations than just simply drawing a robotic rabbit. So I really had to analyze this and think what was going on here. So I may have made a lot of adjustments and additions to it as an adult illustrator. So here we go. So this is a robotic rabbit and obviously I have most of the gears and other things covered by metal because robots, I think it would be foolish to have their insides exposed. As a human, having your insides exposed isn't ideal. 
So having your gears and such exposed only means one thing as a robot, right? It means you're probably damaged and there's probably like metal plates and like your skin is missing. So maybe this rabbit has been attacked in some way. So I don't know why there would be a robotic rabbit in the world. Like what? Why? what's the meaning of this? I have no idea. So let's just imagine we live in the future where our animals are robots for some reason. I don't know. I think there's a video game about that, but I, I have no idea. So this rabbit has been attacked probably by a robotic wolf. So its thigh is exposed. It's missing part of its arm, exposing some wiring. One of its ears has been quite destroyed. And speaking of ears, I decided that to make this animal more of an animal, I thought it would be really interesting because as a robot, obviously a human has made this robotic animal. Robotic animal. <laughs> So to make this robotic animal more animal-like, maybe the humans that made it have put some animal flesh on it. So the ears of this robotic rabbit are either actual ears from a robot or they're just made out of like the skin or pelt of an actual rabbit. I thought that would be really interesting because otherwise an animal would have no interest in attacking this animal because it would just be another robot. But if it smelled like a rabbit, hence the rabbit pelt or fur or skin or whatever on the ears, then... But at the same time, why would a robotic wolf even be attacking a robot rabbit? Look, I'm not here to question my nine-year-old self in creating a robotic rabbit. I'm just here to have too much fun in redesigning a robotic rabbit and thinking too hard on why a robotic rabbit even exists. Oh, and one big thing I changed on this illustration is instead of having a ray of light coming down from what I can only assume is the spring light coming into this foresty winter scene. I looked up if winter storms were a thing because I think I've heard of that. So yes, lightning during a snowstorm is a very rare thing, but it's possible. So I thought it would be really interesting to include a thundercloud instead of sun coming down because I mean that ray of light stops abruptly. So who are you to say that's not lightning? Am I right? I guess also while I was creating this, I was thinking that maybe the rabbit was struck by lightning because it is a metal being and lightning would probably go towards this creature that's made out of metal. I think that was my original idea, but then I also got distracted by the whole flesh ear thing and like a metal wolf and all this stuff. But basically I thought it would be more fun to have a lightning cloud instead of this random ray of light that stops abruptly. Long story short, I like this metal rabbit. The Portrait So for this illustration, I had a few thoughts pop into my head. So at first I thought it would be really interesting to recreate this illustration as an actual real like lifelike portrait of myself. But you guys, I'm going to be honest. The last time I tempted a realistic portrait of myself was the 500 drawing prompts a video which was what over a year ago at this point i'm not really sure i attempted a realistic portrait of myself with watercolor which i've never done it was horrible and i haven't done it since so obviously with zero practice of realistic portraits with watercolor i am going to be no better than i was a year ago so i thought you know if this is a representation of the way i draw now compared to the way i drew 20 years ago it would be stupid to do something that i don't normally do so what was the point other than to challenge myself to do realism which honestly would be a whole video on its own so i will embarrass my myself another time for now 
this is the way I do portraits. I do a illustrative, cartoony sort of style. That's my style of drawing now, so that's what I did. And of course, originally I was going to do a normal bust drawing that I did 20 years ago, but then I got really distracted and just got really carried away, I think, with drawing myself like thigh up. I just think that busts are fine and they're really fun if you can make them really fun, but I didn't think that would be fun for this drawing video thing. I thought it would be really interesting to include the paper bag in some way because I wasn't drawing on a paper bag and the original illustration was done on a paper bag. I thought it would be really cute if I was holding a paper bag full of groceries and I just... I think a bust is fine and all if you have a very interesting illustrative style, but I thought it would be really boring if I just drew myself as a bust. So I did a circle sort of cropped situation and had myself holding this paper bag of groceries and then I ended up doing a gold watercolor fine tech circle around myself and overall I think it's a really fun and cute simple but interesting if you look at where I got my inspiration from illustration. Now I did say I was going to include a Pokemon shirt but the more I thought about it the more I thought well I wouldn't wear a Pokemon shirt today but if I were to wear something like a reference to pop culture it would be a very subtle thing and I like stripes, so I gave myself a striped shirt and put some Pikachu heads in between it, but honestly, those heads look like they could be Hatch or Ants or Pikachu. So at this point, it's whatever you want it to be. Not to mention, I must have really liked the color purple because my shirt was purple, which, you know. I don't like purple, so I wasn't about to do. And my art portfolio had my name in purple. There was a lot of purple in these arts, which today, no, I, I couldn't do because I do not like that color of purple. So although this portrait is very different than what I drew 20 years ago, I think it is a very accurate representation of how I draw today, and I really like it. So there you go. my 20 year old redraws of my nine year old self's drawings. I think this one's actually my favorite, but that's probably just because I am partial to my aunt drawings. I think my self portrait redraw was probably the most interesting just because it's really different, but also it's the same. It's still a self portrait. And once again, thank you so much to the sponsor of this video, NordVPN. Make sure you click the link in the description if you want to be all safe and secure. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.